everybody. Welcome to another edition of Poe Community. I'm Mike Arboyd, and I'm sitting here with Jay Kwan. How's it going, man? Hey, good. Thank you. Hey, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, I'm Jay Kwan. I'm like, uh, I'm like a creative from Vancouver, originally from Hamburg, Germany. Cool. So, yeah, I came here in April last year, and ever since, I've been just pursuing my artistic ventures, I guess. Cool. So, like... You're into clothing design, right? That's what it is. Yeah. Your line is called Confused by yeah. Jaquan. Confused by Jaquan, exactly. Yeah. I it's I call it streetwear with like an artistic take. Yeah. It's um it just takes a lot of inspiration from original original like fine art, in a sense, um where it's like treated as fine art. So it comes with a certificate and everything. Like, oh, cool. You know, I'm trying to I'm trying because like. The fashion industry is so commercialized and it's so like oversaturated too that people forget the kind of art it is essentially. Yeah. And um, that's something I've always been a fan of like actual, you know, all kinds of art. And I feel like fashion is like you, people forget it is an actual like fine art. Almost. Yeah. Uh, is it like every piece? completely different from the other is that what yeah. that means like um no i really, i do like small small runs so okay. like they they are always very limited and i try to like switch it out so i i try to use my logo not too often because in the end everything i do still carries my signature but it should be it should not just be like a, a hoodie with my logo slapped on or something you know like yeah. here and there i pop out some like basics but other than that, I always try to like do different stuff, you know, treat the garments differently and different designs and different styles and just whatever comes to mind, right? Yeah. How did you get into it? Like, um, I so I started off with modeling, and then I was surrounded by by just that environment, right? So and I've always liked fashion, so it just came naturally, I guess. I I just wanted to do something after I came to Canada for the first time. I was here for half a year in 2016 yeah. and it really inspired me to doing some more with myself, right? Do do some more in life. And so I went back to Germany and then that's when I started modeling and then it just, just happened. Kind of happened from there. Uh, is there any major differences in fashion between Germany and Canada? Um, yeah, definitely. I feel like, so you always got to like, differentiate like just mainstream fashion and then like some more you know some more like um scene kind of fashion you know like people that are really into into like high fashion some people really into streetwear some people like more into like subcultures like grunge and like like punk or something like that right so there's like many aspects to it and i feel like in every in every city you find in every country you, you can find all of those yeah. but it just yeah there's a difference while in germany it's like you get a lot of people inspired by um by more subtle subtle i think it's it's something within the culture but that people get really they like really like subtle flexes so it's like they would they would wear like a just a black jean jacket and you wouldn't even know where it's from until you actually look at it close and see the fit you see the you see the product you see the like quality of the product and while here it's like i feel like here it's a lot more inspired by like the whole fashion scene here is a lot inspired by hip-hop and rap so mm -hmm. it's more of that yo look i got i got this you can tell by the logo on the shirt you yeah know? like um, so yeah, that's I would say a huge difference between in especially like Europe and North America, but you know like there's also such people in in Europe and more like European style people here. Yeah, they're inspired by each other's uh, others fashion pretty much. Yeah, yeah like uh, some people, it, especially nowadays, with being able to contact those places, other places in the world, so easily right. and knowing what it's like there, you can kind of choose what fits you right exactly. um you said you were a model like uh so is this uh like were you um 
doing fashion ads like uh like photography or was it runway or it was um yeah i would do like more photography so it would be like um it started off when i met this photographer and he said yo like you should model and then we did like a test shoot and it was like for some editorial just for his portfolio and then i met at there i met like a model and then signed to an agency and then after that i did a bunch of like editorials for like magazines and stuff like that cool yeah so like for fashion who would you say is your your idol like what Mm. what would you what style do you like what really inspired you to do this um i mean there's like a lot of people that really inspire me but just from the storyline kind of like just from how they came up it would definitely be like virgil obi kanye obi nigo even like asa bari Hmm. um people like that because they kind of like you know they came up more less of a traditional fashion way because before before that kind of generation it was a lot okay you go to fashion school then you start your own brand with some like um crowdfunded funding or whatever and then you, you start with low level runway shows and you work yourself out work 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 these people they kind of they had like except for like so most of these people i just named they had no actual like schooling so for example at a certain point Kanye was already like an established artist, right? With like awards, everything, like a millionaire. Yeah. And he decided, yo, like, let me take this fashion thing to the next level. And Virgil was his like his consultant at that moment, at that time. So they went to Japan and learned about stuff on their own, right? They met with the right people, learned the actual the history and all the techniques. Then they went to um, Milan and interned at Fendi. And that's just, you know, you get coffee for people and stuff like that. Yeah. And those were wealthy people, right? And yeah. they, they would they would do still they would still do the dirty work just to you know, just to to learn, right? Yeah. So I feel like wherever there's like passion, there's a way to gain knowledge. Yeah. And so in that sense, there's definitely different ways of doing it, but these people just inspire me because they pretty much just did it on their own accord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like a, the story. I don't know if you know about like Dr. Dre back in the day. People were questioning his like his um, basically his training, uh-huh. like even though he was making it down outstanding stuff. So he ended up going to music school to, after he was already a multimillionaire yeah. just so he can get classically trained just to exactly. shut people up kind yeah. of. right. But he did it out of his he doesn't need to do that. Like exactly. literally, especially now. With music, you do not need classical right? <laughs> training. You could be a kid in your basement that just makes a banger, right? For so sure. it's it, it's uh, different times. Um, obviously, your uh, your brand is streetwear, right? Like mm-hmm. it's uh, confused uh, by Jake One, but it's like streetwear. So, are mm-hmm. you really inspired by the hip hop culture? Yeah, for sure. I feel like that that takes a lot of like like I give a lot of credit to hip hop culture just because you know it just goes along, and I feel like. Yeah, I've always admired like actual like you know artisan kind of more stuff. Yeah. But in the end, I I always lean towards even with my personal style, I lean towards like actual like functionality over like over that. I guess not even necessarily functionality. More about I I care a lot about authenticity, right? Yeah. So I would like you know I would like sometimes wear like some some high-end designer stuff with like a throw the car jacket or something you know yeah just because it's you know you can to me the actual product goes over the brand right so if i like the product it could be any brand you know yeah and if it's like if it if it fulfills its purpose and it is like you know it's better to buy like some like a pair of dickies instead instead of like a pair of like the chinos or whatever from H&M or something yeah because it's just it's the original it's like you know yeah yeah it's authentic. yeah it's um I feel like that's uh it, western culture in general um is very uh look first and practicality mm-hmm. last I don't know what it is we're very um controlled by like media and what they tell us we want to wear it's like you were saying with brands like brand clothing being so big just slap a a logo on it Mm. and a lot of the time those brands the actual clothing is less quality 
than the cheaper brands that aren't that brand name, right? So when you can find that quality and match it with maybe the brands you like, like you said, that that seems like the best way to go. <laughs> yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, yeah. Uh, do you have a website? Do you, like, you yeah. Know, like, uh, it's like confusedbyjquan.com. Okay. Yeah. So on there, there's like, I always, I work in drops. Um, just so like sometimes I just put stuff out and then when it sells out or like after some time, I just like put more stuff out and whenever, like I always try to like switch it up. So that's why I never have a lot of stock in the, in the store, but it always updates like every month. Yeah. So it's like just an online store, no physical shop, exactly. right? Yeah. yeah just yeah. online store. When, when like this whole COVID thing, it's like, it's better. Like, and just when it's possible again. Uh, I'm definitely going to have like more like events like like pop-ups like um, art installations too you know just um, different kind of experiences you know yeah. with my brand without my brand and um, yeah most likely also some more club events last year in October I did like the Vancouver Fashion Week after party and it turned out awesome like I had local acts like perform I was like so it was Jamon who was performing, and he brought out people like uh, Boslin and Eric Radcliffe, yeah. um, and yeah, the people loved it, right? It was like uh, the club was like at max capacity, and it was like legit, like a hundred people still waiting outside. Nice. So I would definitely love to like do some more events like that. Yeah. So like adapting during these times, even though like you want to go do those events again, like yeah. so bad, right? And it's uh it's it's tempting still it's still tempting to do it because you can technically do it at lower numbers but mm -hmm. it's uh it's almost better to wait make people want that exactly. event again right exactly because like ever since then like i mean i did a big event in hamburg too yeah that was my pretty much my launch um but those events they just show like you know it's possible like i'm i don't have the biggest like following but you know a good promo a good vision a good product yeah it gets you places right? yeah yeah and um but it's also like if you don't have the biggest following as it could have a lot to do with the um the smaller batches that you're doing so mm -hmm. the people that are really like keen on your stuff you don't need to build a huge following if you only want to push so much of one product right mm -hmm. but when you are you're pushing quality and style and creativity yeah. uh numbers don't matter like exactly. that especially if you're passionate okay. about this like I feel it's a good time. This generation's really um, putting their almost like mental health and positivity and and fun before that whole like the typical mm. nine to five lifestyle, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, coming out to Canada, like, is this a full time? Are you planning to stay out here? Yeah, for sure. Like, um, I'm definitely gonna stay here for a couple more years. I might, you know, I might move to like U.S. Yeah. If, like times get better yeah, yeah obviously. There, you know and yeah i just i just go with the flow right yeah I, I try to like further my career um just you know do whatever i love and yeah. just also support the people around me so yeah i just you know go wherever i'm needed yeah <laughs> So are you like you still like is your you pushing your line pretty hard still in germany or? yeah yeah i i just like I think, almost, yeah, two weeks ago now, I put out some new stuff and like instantly, like people from Germany already got it. And then like first week, I had to send out a bunch of mail to like Germany. Yeah. So that's definitely dope. I mean, the yeah, it's just it's nice to see that people still go all the way. Like they still like the people from Germany. They still like you know they still fans and they still like what I do. So they would even go through like paying. It's really crazy rates and shipping yeah. just to bring the bring the stuff to like um, Germany. Right? Yeah, I know all about shipping. That's what I did as a career for many years too. So yeah. it's uh, yeah, shipping overseas is not not an yeah. easy task. And obviously, like, um, where do you go to get your stuff made? Like, um, I have like so for the longest time, I was just um, talking to manufacturers here and there and just sourcing products from wherever I could find a good product. Yeah. And then just, you know, making it my own product, right? But um, ever since, like, you know, COVID gave me a lot of time. Yeah. Just because of lockdown. I was for three months in London with my family. 
um, for for lockdown, just to like, <clears throat> you know, just just to be with them. And in that time, I just you know I figured I need more of like a a plan. You know, I was gonna do this year. I was gonna do like another pop up. I was gonna do another club event, and th that would have been fun and all. But like you know, it it doesn't really it doesn't really further my career if I don't keep pushing stuff out, right? So if I don't have my brand set up in a certain, you know, I hadn't, so I had that artistic part kind of figured out, but the business aspect, I hadn't really like worried too much about that because I was just seeing where it goes. But during COVID, it really like, it gave me time to like, you know, regroup and just think about, okay, where am I going exactly, you know, which is very, very important. And so I adjusted my business plan a tiny little bit and also um, just figured stuff out like, okay, how do I ship stuff, you know, like how have a proper packaging, like all the, like the branding is really, really important, you know, like people forget like stuff like hang tags, you know, like that people, you know, the, the feeling of luxury, it starts in one's brain, right? Yeah. So to, you can utilize it, but it just, you know, you just have to, you have to think, okay, what do I want as a customer, right? What does give, for example, I was working, I had custom tags made in different, in different material just to, to, to feel what I would, what I would think. Is it, is it like high quality? Is it like low quality? Because you never know, right? You have to talk to these manufacturers and they get you that stuff done, but they don't do like, they don't do a lot of like, I mean, with, with tags and stuff, sample orders start at like maybe like 20 or something or like, and that's, you're already overpaying per tag, right? Yeah. So I might as well just order a whole batch and hope that it turns out good Yeah. and just go for it, right? So that's a lot of research and thought I have put into that, you know, into this whole branding thing just to get across my like vision and just what I had planned. So during COVID, I did all that, right? All this research. Okay, what do I want? I tried different like tagging options, different branding options. I decided, okay, I don't want to work too much with my logo because that would be too too simple, right? Yeah. That would be too. That would it would bore me. So essentially, um, yeah. After 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 like after lockdown, I came back and I I had a plan what to do, and now. Ever since I dropped my stuff like two weeks ago, I just before that I had the stuff sitting since like January, and I only dropped it like two weeks ago because first of all COVID and because I had to figure out everything. And now I'm at a point where I I just recently accepted like a, a manufacturing deal with a made in Canada brand. Yeah. So it's really cool. So all the stuff is going to be very high quality made nice. in Canada. And um, it just, you know, now that I have everything set up the way it is, I can solely focus on the artistic path I'm taking. Nice. You know? And I don't have to worry about a lot of stuff anymore. So that's really good. So it, it did come in like a, as like a blessing in disguise, I guess. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. Uh, it made you concentrate almost in the, sometimes it, this, uh, I find that this time it made people concentrate on their, like, um, the stuff that makes them not uncomfortable, but just they're not like, that's not why they're doing it, but mm -hmm. they have to do it type yeah. thing. So it makes you do those jobs that you might not have wanted to do, but it gave you the time to do so finally, because it needs to get done. And it sounds like you're a one man show, right? Like you're doing um, it. Yeah. You know, every, every, everybody I work with is like, I do collaborate with like, I have some people I really like to collaborate with. And like, you know, we've been going way back. Like, for example, like Theo Lican. And I, we, like, he's my photographer, and, like, we work together on a couple of projects, and then I have, obviously, friends helping me out, but, like, it, whatever I need to get done, I like to actually co contract people, yeah. and then just, you know, get it done business-wise. It's, it's so much easier than having a team, and not, because I like having full creative control. Yeah. Obviously, your projects with, like, um, my photographer, we both, you know, we both, like, kind of have the creative lead, and the you know, ideas. But other than that, you know, the product, I want the product to be me, right? I want the product to be like something I came out with, something that is done in the way I feel comfortable with it. Right? Yeah, that totally makes sense. Do you have any upcoming launches at all? Or um, Yeah, around like 
in the next in the next month yeah. there's going to be there's going to be new stuff coming out yeah i have like something special planned also like a couple shoots planned so cool yeah there's a lot coming um right now it's like you know i have a lot of time to my hands just because i'm not taking classes at the moment so um i'm definitely working hard on like my brand and stuff oh cool where can we find that where like yeah, social media like, pages um yeah so the 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 it's like at confuse by j dot kwan cool and yeah my personal is j dot kwan kohta okay yeah i'll put it up on the screen so everybody can see it um and that's all instagram right yeah cool and then we'll put up your website as well yeah, anything else you want to promote you, you good uh, I'm, I think I'm good. Yeah, yeah, man. Thank you for joining us. It's awesome. It's uh, our first, uh, basically, designer to come yeah. in since we've had this. And it's definitely something that interests me. Like, I I love, I, and if you see me, I'm very um, flam, like flamboyant colors. And I, lo I love just bright colors. And I feel like right now is, it's kind of hot. I don't know if it came back. <laughs> I, I'm like, it's kind of coming back. I'm an old man that should yeah. start dressing a little bit nicer. But, you know. That's what I like to do, but Stop. yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm glad you came in. It's uh, some knowledge. You actually you. presented some knowledge to me. I didn't know about the industry. So thanks, man. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate you having me. No problem, man. Follow Jay Kwan on all of his social medias and thank you for joining us for another edition of Poke Community. Have a good one.